So the world of cyberpunk is a crazy in-depth one, and the level CD Project Red have gone to to make this one of the most unique open world RPGs ever is staggering. It's beyond anything I have seen from a console game of this sort, and today I bring you 5 things that show you just how much this game has offers and the depth to it. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Now if you guys are new to Cyberpunk and want a place to see in depth guides on what this game offers you have come to the right place. Check out my Cyberpunk playlist link below for all your needs on what this game is and offers. Ok so today people we check out 5 things that show how in depth this game is and the level CD Project Red have gone to to make this game a one of a kind. So firstly, the city itself. Now this is called Night City and it's made up of six different districts. Now the city itself is utterly massive, but what makes this even bigger isn't just the area it's based upon, but it's a verticality here too. With buildings on top of buildings on top of buildings on top of buildings, for the most part all explorable. Now looking at the map on screen now it doesn't look the biggest, but it is seriously deceiving. Now the six districts you can see are Watson, Westbrook, City Centre, Haywood, Santo Domingo and Pacifica. We then also have the Badlands and the Orbital Air Space Centre. This place is truly big. Now I've already made a video which shows all you need to know about the depth of each district, but they are all ram packed with things unique to them including weapons, vehicles, cyberware, side missions and even gangs. And I mean I could go on for hours alone here on this city and the size of it, its districts and the surrounding areas. But guys it ain't actually the reason I've included it here because this was obviously going to be pretty depthy. But what many people don't know is CD Project Red took it a step further with this city by actually naming every single street within Night City. Now think about that for a second, every single street has its own name and well what that means is well I guess we will have to learn such and while that itself is a game beyond most have played. And while this can help in various different ways, when the game finally gets multiplayer and you want to call out to your friends, and well as so many other instances too. So yes guys, every single street within this game has its own name and there is a ton of them. Ok so we're going to move on and next up character and character customization. Now the customization within this game is truly staggering. Not only with appearance, but with options that actually change the game. But appearance wise, it's pretty crazy too, to a point of where you can actually adjust genitalia. I mean just about everything to make your character super unique. And while the customization doesn't end there because things just get crazier, but actually guys, it doesn't start there because the character will be playing called V, no matter the gender you go with. Before we even get into the true character customization which we'll talk about later on in the video, there are three life path options in which truly change the way you play this game and well the way the game plays you and sets you up for the person you will be going into missions this game offers in terms of dialogue options and the way you are perceived and much more. For instance, the three life paths are named Nomad, Street, Kid and Corporate. Each life path sees you playing around 30 minutes of gameplay to set this up for you. But for instance going in with Street Kid, which basically means you've lived and been brought up within the streets, this means playing a game you are already known within the streets and this will hold up well within certain street gangs. But say you choose corporate where you lived a higher tier of life, visiting said same gangs, things won't be as simple, you will be perceived in a completely different way. And it's the same for each three life paths, each having benefits you will experience within the story when you meet certain levels this campaign throws at you. So yeah the character you play, the customization surrounding your character and the depth they have taken it to is truly unique and remarkable. Ok so next up and back to the city, well not the city but the occupants of the city. Now this actually made me laugh a little because it just truly shows how crazy and in depth this game is. So CD Project Red confirmed that over 1000 NPCs, non playable characters within this game have daily routines which they follow to a point of them literally living their own lives which to me is like nothing I have ever experienced in the past from a game before. Imagine being able to just follow people around watching them go about their lives within a video game and yet there are thousands of people doing this, absolutely craziness. So they wake up within the morning, go to their job, work that job, go home at night 
people actually living lives within a game, many of who you probably would never even come across. I mean, that's just ridiculous in my opinion, but amazing at the same time. Okay, so the last things I will cover are two other ways in making V your very own. So firstly, the skill tree. The skill tree in this game is honestly staggering. How I see it is, and I know people don't really like comparing, but this game's closest opponent is no doubt GTA 5, which let's face it, is an incredible game. It was way ahead of the game, and while well, still is to this day, up there are the most popular games played. But Cyberpunk has way more of an RPG element to it, and this skill tree reflects that. And my point behind this is I couldn't imagine such in GTA 5, but imagine adding this to GTA 5? Wow. So when you are done creating your character, you have five standard attributes. These attributes are the foundation of your character and will see you and your character through the early stages of the game. So spending points across these five attributes here progress your skill tree. So body, cool, technical intelligence and reflexes. These skills have subcategories, so to speak, which determine the type of mercenary you will be and each attribute opens up doorways for more perks and abilities and the way you play this game. For instance, we can see here cool is represented by assassination, nerve and snipers, technical by engineering, body by melee, athletics, two-handed and shotguns, intelligence by hacking and reflexes by handguns, rifles and blades. So each of these attributes and points here determine how good you will be at said sub perk. The more points into the attribute, the higher stat sub perk can be leveled. For instance, intelligence here is at a level 9. You can also see hacking is here maxed out at a level 9. But don't get it twisted. Because you spent 9 points into that attribute, does it mean the sub perk will automatically be that level? You still have to level up that sub perk. And to do so, you need to earn XP. For instance, here you will earn XP by hacking things, as you can see by the little XP bars. And it's the same for everything else. Now, attribute points can be earned and so I believe can be perk points by leveling up that street credit. So you also have two levels here to level up. Standard levels which I believe so many levels give you an attribute point and then street credit which is leveled up numerous ways and can give you perk points too. So there is a lot of leveling up for sure people and like I said the depth here is absolutely crazy and the way in which you level up your skill tree and spend your points will truly determine the way you play this game. And yes, you can complete the campaign from start to finish without killing a single person. That is entirely possible. So you can hack your way to the end, use your intelligence to get to the end. That's how crazy this game is. Now I've already made a guide on this and skill trees and so much more in my character customization video. If you want to learn more on this, that playlist is linked below. Click on it, check out those videos people, you won't be disappointed. Okay, so lastly guys, we're going to check out another level of customization, which shows the levels of depth to this game. What we're going to check out is called Cyberware. So a brief description of what Cyberware is if you do not know. So within Cyberpunk 2077, Cyberware has become as commonplace as tattoos and jewelry. The reasons for installing it are many and varied, including simple tech upgrades, combat enhancements and even fashion statements. The possession of trendy cyberware has become an integral and defining part of Night City's culture. Uniqueness is just another form of currency. To make it big, you need to look the part. Style is everything. And while cyberware is basically cybernetic enhancements you can put in or on your body. And while the options here are truly staggering. Now cyberware the player can install, exchange or improve parts at Ripperdux across the city of Night City. Ripperdux are basically doctors who install cyberware which you'll find across the whole city and I'm guessing different ones will offer different things. Now there are three different categories here to this cyberware that can be distinguished by. Active must be carried out by the player directly comparable to weapons. Triggered, activated as soon as certain framework conditions are met and passive, the cyberware starts working as soon as it's been installed and runs continuously in the background. Now the player can install cyberware of their own choice in different slots of your own body. The brain can take three slots, eyes, cardiovascular system can take three, immune system can take two, peripheral nervous system can take two, the skin can take three, operating system can take one, and then we have the skeletal system, hand one, arm one, and both legs. Now comparable to other items in this game like weapons and vehicles, there are common, uncommon, rare and legendary cyberware to acquire. Some cyberware exists in different qualities, others may only exist in a legendary form, depending on the quality of the cyberware. 
and different number of slots may be required. And well, here are a few examples of cyberware in which you can install on yourself and what they offer. Mantis Blades, probably the most famous cyberware in the game. These mighty blades protrude from your forearms and several fragments are available. Blood Pump, installed in the cardiovascular system slot. It activates at a certain point in time and improves healing. Micro Rotors, passive cyberware in a nervous system that improves movement speed and precision. Reflex Tuners, a triggered cyberware that activates slow motion as soon as your health falls below a critical value. Gorilla Hands, logically installed in the hands and vastly improve your strength and melee strength. There are several fragments here. Monoware, the cyberware that houses a fiber optic lasso in your arm which you can use to easily slice opponents into slices. The quick hack function we've seen in numerous gameplay videos is probably one of these fragments. And then we have Kerenzikov, a booster spray, but it also exists as an implant for your nervous system. The trigger activates a slow motion effect as soon as you have successfully avoided an enemy kill. Then we have Sin Lungs, artificial lungs that are installed in the cardiovascular system and improve the regeneration of your endurance. So yeah guys, there are only a few examples, but pretty crazy amounts you can do to yourself. Again, I do take a deeper look into cyberware, if you ain't fully clued on to what it is, within my character customization video. Again, as within my playlist link below. So yeah guys, we get all of this rammed into what they say is a 60 hour campaign. Like what? And then the multiplayer feature to come too. Just absolutely amazing people. This game is truly going to be something else. But yeah, five things which just show how in-depth this game is and I'm pretty sure there's many other instances too. But these are the five that just jumped out at me. But on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Cyberpunk, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.